Hello, my brother and sister. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this hope cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, and let us pray. God, we thank you for this time together. We pray for these that are joining us. God, may this be a blessing to you and a blessing to them. God, Lord, if there's anything that is needed in their household by them or their uh, or folks, their loved ones, God, bless them in the name of Jesus according to your divine will. God, we just thank you for this time together. May this worship experience be a blessing to you and to your kingdom and to your people. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to 2 Timothy, first chapter, beginning at the sixth verse, where it reads, For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us share in these announcements. If you have any prayer requests, simply send your prayer requests to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Alternatively, you can reach us by email at fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com, and our compassionate team will fervently pray with and for you, trusting that God will work according to His divine will. We also invite you to connect with us through our website, at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com There you will find our monthly newsletter. Inside, you'll discover a wealth of valuable information and engaging content to enjoy. If you wish to be added to the listserv to receive our newsletter, please enter your email address and click on the subscribe button. We'll send it straight to your inbox every month. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel. If you have not done so already, we encourage you to please subscribe. Click on that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all of our latest content and receive notifications whenever we post new messages or communications. Hit that subscribe button and let's stay connected. You can also connect with us by looking at our daily scriptures. Each day, these inspiring scriptures will enrich your spiritual journey. We invite you to visit our website to access and meditate on them. See how they can positively impact your Christian walk. We would also like to remind and or invite you to our weekly virtual Bible study held every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. To be a part of our Bible study sessions, simply send a request to fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com and we'll gladly provide you with the link to participate. For those of you seeking a deeper study beyond our regular Bible studies, 
we are thrilled to inform you that there are some classes available to you through the Christian College of Georgia at no cost or offer at a low cost. These classes are designed to cater to your spiritual growth and personal calling, whether that's to become a minister, a leader, or you just want to grow in your spiritual journey. Explore our Christian education page where you'll find the links to these wonderful learning opportunities. Please take advantage of these resources, and as you engage in these classes, we would love to hear about your experiences and growth. Heartfelt thanks to all of you who have been giving. Your gifts are instrumental in enabling us to reach and impact people across the world. If you're inspired to join us now in giving, there are three convenient ways to make your contribution. PayPal. Go to PayPal and use the username at Fountain of Hope to make your donation. Go to our website, www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com for a seamless online giving process. And you may also mail a check to Fountain of Hope Christian Church at P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Let us pray. God, we just thank you for these that are giving right now. These are opening up their treasures and laying before your throne that are laying on your altar, Lord, giving to you. God, we just thank you for what you're doing in their lives. And Lord, bless this gift that it may return to them 70 and 100 fold and that it may go toward building your kingdom. Lord, let the little become much, and so there may be meat in this house. And God, for the one who's unable to give, Lord, we pray for them as well. God, bless them that they may receive something today. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. God, we just thank you for this time right now where we are before your throne. Lord, let me decrease that you might increase, that your people may hear you, that your people may experience you, that your spirit may move like a mighty rushing wind, that they may feel their hearts, God, that they may be empowered, that they may be uplifted, that they may be encouraged. Bless them in Jesus' name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. My strength and my redeemer. I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. All saints, turn in your Bibles to 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles, the fifth chapter, and we're just going to read three verses today. First of all, the first verse and the 13th and the 14th. So all the work that Solomon had performed for the house of the Lord was completed. Then Solomon brought in the items his father David had dedicated, silver, the gold, and all the furnishings, and he placed them in the treasuries of the house of God. The trumpeters and the singers joined together to praise and thank the Lord with one voice. They lifted up their voices accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and musical instruments and praise to the Lord, for he is good. His loving devotion endures forever, and the temple, the house of the Lord, was filled with the cloud, so that the priest could not stand there to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Amen. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Today's message is completeness with the spirit. Completeness with the spirit. Completeness with the spirit. Today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, a significant day in the life of the church. Pentecost marks the day mentioned in Acts 2 where the people of God gathered at Pentecost after Jesus and had they, after they had, Jesus had ascended into heaven. It marks the moment where the promise that Jesus had made comes to fruition. Jesus had promised that when he left, he would send a comforter. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. Acts 2 says that the people came together on one accord and the Holy Spirit came through the gathering all oh, like a mighty rushing wind. And the people began to speak in many languages or tongues as other people could hear their native tongues giving praise to God. What a mighty moment for the people of God. 
It also marks the moment where the church of Jesus Christ was born. The power of the Holy Spirit launched the living church of Jesus Christ. Some of you know about how pretty things have some substance inside and some don't. It looks beautiful on the outside, but what's on the inside, what is supposed to be inside as it is intended to be? If any of you have owned or operated an automobile for any period of time, you know that you can have a beautiful car that shines and glistens in the sun and will turn the head of everyone that sees it. However, without gas and electricity, it will not move. It will not move. The car has to have power to do what it was designed to do. And today I want to focus on completeness with the spirit. Saints, you can wear all the crosses you want, find the best looking church outfit. Ladies, you can wear all the church hats you want. Men, you can wear all those suits. But unless you have the Holy Spirit, my God, you're not complete. The Holy Spirit. Uh, and how it manifests is one thing, which is not what we're talking about today, but you must have it. Prepare for the Holy Spirit. First, prepare for the Holy Spirit. As we look at this text in Second Chronicles, first thing I want to point out to you is you need to prepare for the Holy Spirit. Prepare for the Holy Spirit. There is some preparation that we must do in order to prepare for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, for one, will not dwell in an unclean place. We must do something to get ready for the Holy Spirit so that it may abide within us. In the building of the temple, God had given Solomon specific instructions as how the temple should be constructed. And up until this point, the Hebrew had been worshiping in a tabernacle, which was a tent that was pitched to worship God wherever they were. Remember, God dwells everywhere. So the tabernacle, the temple, and even the church is about God's creation as more than it is about God, because God does dwells everywhere. But God meets us in the tabernacle. God meets us in the temple. God meets us in the church. And it's a place to be able to connect with God. But let me be very clear. God does not need a tabernacle, a temple, or a church to do what God wants to do. Amen. There were specific requirements for this temple that Solomon built. In its construction on this hill in Jerusalem, the place that Hebrew calls Zion, this building had an outer court where any and everyone could gather and, and they would go in the outer court to prepare for worship and they would prepare for their offerings and the sacrifices such as lamb and birds and animals and plants and even bread. Many times praise would begin on the steps of the temple in the outer court to start bringing people together. We do that today as we enter to worship, and, and some of you may heard it spoken. We have what is called a call to worship, bringing the people together to worship that happened in the outer court. Someone begins to go and gather the minds and thoughts and bodies of the people of God together so they can worship corporately together. However, as they move closer to the inside, they would enter into the inner court. I can hear someone say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we go in with expectancy. Expectancy. We go in with the mind of praise. We go in with God on our mind. For some of you, you're missing the full experience of church, the full experience of God, because you think it's about just going to the church, but you got to get yourself ready, your mind, your body, your spirit. You think it's about you being in your nice outfit so that people could see you. You have to put your mind on God. You have to connect your spirit with God's spirit. You have to put away the cares of the world and focus on Jesus, the son of God. You have to prepare yourself for worship. If you have not prepared yourself as a vessel for God, don't expect God to be in your vessel. I need you to focus on what is happening according to the rite of Second Chronicles. The temple was being finished by Solomon, who had done so according to God's instruction. 
Solomon's father, David, dedicated some items, the silver and the other things, and they were placed in this temple and they were dedicated for the purpose of glorifying God. Just like silver, just like gold and the other furnishings that were dedicated, we don't get the full effect of the temple, the church, until we dedicate ourselves, until we sanctify ourselves, until we prepare ourselves for the worship experience. And as we go in the inner court, this is where it takes place. And finally, there is the Holy of Holies where only the priest can go to commune with God. And there was a curtain between the Holy of Holies and the people. Only the priest could go behind this curtain at that time. We're talking Second Chronicles. The people had to remain in the inner court. And what's different between the temple of Solomon and the church at Pentecost is because something happened. Somebody say something happened. Something happened when Jesus died and rose from the dead. When Jesus, they hear me, beloved, when Jesus died, the Bible says, that when Jesus died, the earth shook because the wages of sin were being paid. Jesus was settling our debt of sin. And it was at this point that the curtain tore. The curtain tore. The curtain tore. That's something to worship God about. That is something to worship Jesus about. The justification transaction had been performed, and now God was accessible without the priest. The curtain was gone. And now by faith, we have access to the power of God through Jesus Christ. There is some preparation that has to take place to get your mind right. There is some preparation that has to take place to prepare you to, to bring your offering. Yes, the offering is theologically and ontologically a part of a living worship. God has blessed you with something and asked for a portion of that back as an offering. Are you prepared for the Holy Spirit? Oh, it takes all of it. Now, not only did Solomon build the temple, but he systematically gathered the people together. The elders gathered, the musicians gathered, but they couldn't go in until everything was in place. They could not go in until everything was in place. The thing about worship is that it is with everybody. They couldn't go in to everybody was in place. They even had the Ark of the Covenant present. And inside this Ark were words of the Lord that were given to Moses. Someone please note that in God's house, there must be God's word. Amen. To prepare for service for God, we need to make sure that we have the word of God. And in Acts, over in the New Testament. The people came from near and far and they got on one accord, again, together on one accord. You don't need to worry about the job. You don't need to worry about what's going on in the house, at your house. Just go to God's house to worship God. Focus your mind on God. Secondly, as you have prepared yourself, just like they did with the temple with Solomon, ah, submit to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, there is some submission that has to happen. Some of us don't like the word submit. James 4 and 7 says, if you submit to the Lord, resist the devil, he will flee. There is power in submitting to God. I need to be clear that we do not need to submit to every spirit, but the spirit of the Lord John teaches about spirits in 1 John 4, 1 through 3. He says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. That's John. That's John. Our task is to submit to the one that controls the spirits. Amen. Amen. Our task is to submit to the one that controls the spirits. Hebrews 12 and 9. How much more should we submit to the Father 
of the spirits and live. Hallelujah. Submit to God. You want to control the spirits. You want to submit to the spirits. You want to be in the spirit, submit to God. Since Solomon built this house of God for God, then it would seem that this house needs to be submitted to God. Now that everyone and everything is in order for worship, it's time to submit to God. The people have gathered. The Ark of the Covenant is in place. The musicians are in place. The officers are in place. Everyone who has anything to do with anything about worship is in place. Verse 13 tells us what's to be done next. Verse 13 says, the trumpeters and singers join together to praise and thank the Lord with one voice. They join together to praise and thank the Lord with one voice. They lifted up their voices accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for he is good. His loving devotion endures forever in the temple, the house of the Lord. The Holy Spirit brings completeness. Let's look at Luke 4, where Jesus was about to make a transition in his life, in ministry. This may help someone today. Luke 4 and 1 says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, left Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit before the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit as he faced off the temptation with the devil. Three times the devil tempted him, tempted Jesus. Three times Jesus stood his ground with the word and the Holy Spirit in him. We look at chapter three and we see the moment when John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ right before this happened. Right before Jesus went into the wilderness, John baptized Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus like a dove. And God spoke saying, you are my son whom I love and with you, I'm well pleased. He had been baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him then. And then he went into the wilderness. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, stepped fully into who God had made him. Jesus left the wilderness with the Holy Spirit as he began his ministry with his first miracle being turning water to wine. Everything joined together. Everything joined together. Everyone joined together. It's time to praise the Lord. It's time to give honor and glory to God. There was one voice, even though there were many people. Selfish individual spirits often get in the way of worshiping God. Uh -oh. Beloved, hopefully you are not guilty but I've seen so many times where there are those selfish and individual spirits that show up at the church, not a part of worship, totally contrary to worship. Some of you are so bent on being seen that you don't open your mouth to give God the glory or the praise. When the choirs wear black, you wear blue. When the communion leaders gather for prayers, you don't show up. When the ministers are wearing robes to bring uniformly to the pulpit and you bust up in church with your red dress and extra jewelry. If you are not experiencing the power of God in your temple, I'm talking about you and the one you go to. <laughs> Paul teaches, you see, in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, do you know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. If you have not gotten to that point, you need some more work, my brother, my sister, beloved. If you can't feel the power of the Holy Spirit moving in your life, it's not over. 
you're listening to this message, you have time to get it together. You have time to get yourself together, to be on one accord with God's will for your life. Praying and fasting in the word of God will help you get there as well and help you in knowing what to do and when to do it until you make the decisions, you're still missing the boat. You have to have faith to decide and turn yourself over to God. That's essentially what Solomon did after he built the temple, to God's requirements. The physical part was one part. The outer court looked like it needed to look. The gold and the silver decorations were all over the inner court and in places where they should be. And even the Holy of Holies was in order with the veil fixed between the Holy of Holies and the people that were sitting in the inner court during Solomon's time. But when the people got on one accord, the spirit of the Lord could enter in among them. And they had done all the outward things by bringing in the silver and gold. They began to lift their voices accompanied by the musicians and gave praise to God. When everyone begins to focus on God, the power of the Holy Spirit can move among them. John 4 and 24 reminds us that God is a spirit. Worshippers, worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. You can put all the physical things in place, but it does nothing for God who is a spirit. We must open up our minds and decide to allow ourselves to be vessels of God's Holy Spirit. And when you do it, watch and get ready. See what God is about to do with you, through you, in you. The mind-blowing thing is that when we receive the Holy Spirit, which is said by the Father, the Holy Spirit is not only a source of power, but it is also an advocate for us to the Father. The Holy Spirit will remind us of the teachings and scriptures uh, to help us to live this life that God has blessed us with. And in essence, we will be equipped to go into our own wildernesses. In Acts 2, the same thing happened at the launch of the Church of Jesus Christ. At Pentecost, the people did the physical thing. They all got together in one place. The Bible said all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. So once you're filled with the Holy Spirit, watch the Holy Spirit. Solomon has done everything that God has told him to do, like the believers in Acts had done everything that God had told them to do, and now God could use them in worship. In a special way, the writer of Chronicles says that the house of the Lord was filled with the cloud so that the priest could not stand to minister. The priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. To the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain, Exodus 24 and 17. When Moses uh, went to the top of the mountain, they, they remember how the glory of the Lord was around the top of the mountain. When Jesus' birth was announced to the shepherds in the field that night, the glory of the Lord shone all around them, Luke 2 and 9. Ezekiel describes the glory of the Lord as looking like a glowing metal, brilliant light surrounding God, like the appearance of a rainbow in the clouds on a rainy day as he, his radiance shone around him, Ezekiel 1 and 28. Whatever it looks like, whatever it sounds like, feels like, and even smells like, we know it's something powerful beyond our control. When God takes over, the best thing we can do is keep on worshiping God and watch God. When the temple was ready, when all the people were ready, God began to move through the temple. It may be that if you are not experiencing the glory of the Lord, you may not have gotten your temple in order. Everything in your temple is not focused on God. I didn't say right or wrong because that really doesn't help most people. Today, so many people have different views as to what right and what is wrong. We could spend a great deal of time on that. But today, let's focus on God. The spirit of the Lord began to move in such a way it filled the people and the ministers could not minister. The ministers fell in line and everyone else did too. This was about God. The music was going about God. The people were singing about God. The praise was going up 
to God. The same thing happened at Pentecost. And at Pentecost, the people began to declare the wonders of God in their own tongues. This was so amazing because there were people from many different lands speaking many different languages or tongues. And Peter began to speak over these people after witnessing this powerful worship experience. What's sad today is that some places don't experience the spirit of the Lord, even when they speak the same language. Amen. But when the people come together, great things happen. When the people come together, the yokes are broken. When the focus is on God, people experience the presence of God. Worship goes from a spectator experience to a participation event. And when we get so regimented on what a piece of paper, we, I'm talking about a program, an agenda, an itinerary, or what's on the screen, and forget to let God take control of God's worship, we miss the mark. This kind of talk may not make sense to you, not yet. But if it does, I will I will go to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you when the people sing unto God and not to the choir director, things will happen. When people lift their hands in praise, not because someone asked them to, because they have a testimony. When people dance before the Lord because God is good, not because a musician is playing some kind of music, oh, it's because of the praise that they have within for God that is given to God. When you think about how great God is. You can see the moon, the sun, and the stars. You hear the rolling thunder, and you will see and behold the greatness of God. When you think about how great God is and how good God has been to you, oh, somebody ought to have some praise. Some of you lose it when you think about where you have come from and what God has brought you, what God has done for you. That's powerful. God kept you. God blessed you. God provided for you. God delivered you. God restored you. God elevated you. God did you did for you uh, what no one else could do. Whatever the story it's about God. But praise him on the way to the temple. Praise him in the temple. Praise him at all times. Praise God at all times. Let his praise be continually in, in your mouth. Oh, but some of you have taken it to the next level where you're praising God because God is God. You don't worry about what God is because you know God is going to take care of you. So you praise God because God is God. And that's when you can dance before the Lord like David. That's when you can clap your hands and praise and stomp your feet and praise and let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All today, give him some praise. Give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give God the glory. Give God, give Jesus the praise for being that intercessor for us. Thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for these that are turning their life over to you right now in the name of Jesus. Bless them in a special way. Surround them by people to encourage them, to help them, to, to find their way. God, oh Lord, as they make the, the, the step for the rest of their life, Lord, bless them in a special way. As they repent of their sins and say, Lord, forgive me for I am a sinner. Lord, today I accept you as my Savior. And as they make this declaration, God touch them. Because you said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead, you will be saved. God, these your servants are saved today. Those that have already accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, God, continue to strengthen them and bless them on their journey. Continue to keep them day by day by day by day by day. Bless them according to your divine will. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Brother and sister, we invite you to join this fellowship. You may join this fellowship a number of ways. If you already belong to a fellowship, you can join us by just simply letting us know that you want to join under watch care, which means that you keep your membership wherever you are. But as a part of this fellowship, you will be able to enjoy the right to membership under this opportunity. You may also, if you've never been baptized, we will gladly baptize you into the fall. Let us know. And other ways you can join is you may join by letter. 
we will gladly receive a letter from wherever you're coming from. Let us know that you want to be a part of this membership. Bring that letter and we will bring you into the fold. And then finally, by Christian experience, amen. You've already been baptized. You've already have come into the fold and, and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you can just step in and let God use you in this fellowship. We invite you now to come. Today is your day. The door stands wide open. We invite you to come. Amen, amen, and amen. God loved us and loved us so much that God activated his grace for us. Through humanity's history, God continues to love his creation. And through his son, Jesus Christ, we're able to experience that grace through this outward act of what God is also able to do inside of us. We meet here at the table that is open to all. And as you share with us today, our prayer is that God meets you right where you are. We remember as Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, to the hill called Calvary, he had a meal with the disciples during the season of Passover in the upper room. And there he shared with them, but most of all, he demonstrated to them with this act of love as he shared this last meal. And there he took the cup and he blessed it. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for this sacrifice. Bless this bread, bless this cup. As we remember the great gift that you've given us, or you loved us, loved the world so much, that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which was shed for you. For if often as you drink of this cup, you remember my death till I come drink. Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. For as oft as you eat of this bread, you remember the great gift that I have given for you. Take eat. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www. ChristianChurch.com Now unto him who is able to keep us from God and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, majesty, dominion, and power.